Well, this happened about half an hour ago. Um, we're told by uh, local uh, eyewitnesses that some sort of missile was incoming. It appeared to have been intercepted, uh, but landed, the debris landed on this tram and taxi. We understand from the ambulances that at least one person have died, but someone who we met earlier on at the previous hit site is uh, local MP Alex Goncharenko. Um, Alex, first of all, what do you think has happened here? That's this terror again. The, this time it is a missile attack. You can see the rests of missile uh, once again, absolutely civilian area, like the first place. Mm -hmm. and, no uh, and quite object. close, right? It's only about three yes, kilometers yes, away from the residential is, apartments. Yes, yes, yes. Probably it is uh, one battery or things like this. I don't know. And you see that uh, number of victims could be much higher because the um, place where missile uh, hit is just three, four meters from this building, mm -hmm. residential building. So three, four meters to the right, and all this building will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And there are people inside. Mm -hmm. So this one man killed, man of 1962 year, it, he was born in 1962. Yeah. Oh, he's, he was 39, uh, yeah, 59, sorry. And, uh, but he was just, uh, uh, just uh, he was passing. That's just uh, accidentally. But four meters to right, many more people will be killed. What do you make of these tactics? And do you sense that um, Kiev, the capital city, is coming under more and more attack? Yes. It seems to me, I mean, yeah. all I'm yes, hearing yes. this morning I is air raid sirens. Three attacks today. The third was in Antonov factory. As I know, uh, there were no killed there, fortunately. But still, we have three killed. Today, uh, uh, more than those and wounded, and it's just one morning, and I think it's just start. Mm -hmm. So we need to stop it as soon as we can. We need really to provide Ukraine with the air defense systems, aircraft, just to stop this horror. I've asked you this before, but why would that make so much difference? Be because it's people, people's life. It's hundreds of people who will be, who will be saved if we will be provided with uh, air defense aircrafts just for our army to help and to defend people. And also that's happened here in Kiev. If we will not stop Putin, tomorrow it will be Warsaw. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow it will be Riga. And I don't know what will be next. Mm -hmm. And what do you make of these tactics? I mean, we've heard President Zelensky saying there's no way they'll be able to take the capital city, but um, from from us inside the capital city, it certainly feels they're making edges they're and they're trying, coming closer. They're trying, they're trying to encircle Kiev. They're trying, but I'm also sure that they could not take Kiev. I'm sure. Indeed. Why? Why are you so sure? Because I believe in our army and in our people. I know. Belief is, also, is good. Belief also, is good, but practically, practically they look okay. like even if they don't in take Kiev, the city, they're they're, pum they're pummeling it ah, already. This they can do, yes. They can destroy it, yes, but they cannot take it. I am also a member of Civic Guard. We have uh, dozens of thousands of people just in Kiev in Civic Guard, and if they will penetrate the city, we will make hell here for them. So they will, could not take Kiev, but it they could can be destroy hell for it. you too, though. It is already hell for us. We've seen that happening in Mariupol and other yes, parties. It's Do you fear that the same thing could happen yes. to the capital yes. city? Yes, they, are, they want to do the same. The question is only of resources, and Kiev is ten times bigger than Mariupol, so that means that it will, they will need much more resources and uh, ammunition, and uh, yes, but they want to do the same. We've seen social media posts from a Chechen unit, which may or may not be true, but outside on the edges of Kiev. That's uh, true. I know them personally. I mean, you, there are Chechens work, uh, fighting for Ukraine, like volunteers, and there are Chechens collaborants, which are Putin's like guards. Mm -hmm. They are uh, fighting uh, against Ukraine uh, on the outskirts. I mean, on, in the town settlements of Kiev. Yes. What are your fears about um, the civilians, particularly in this capital city? We've spoken to students, to former bankers, to former teachers who are all now taking up arms and so determined to defend the city. But what, what can you do when you're faced with missiles landing on a capital city? People like me, I am a civilian person, I'm a member of the parliament, but I'm also, I also took my arms in my hands and I'm sure we can. We can hold our city and we can defend our city. That's every person can do something. And when hundreds of thousands will do their best, they could not do with us anything. They can kill 
many of us probably, but they cannot take us. I understood from some of the uh, capital city's administrative um, officials that if the capital is put under siege, they've got about two weeks' worth of food supplies. And we know that the Russian military is targeting the food supply yes. chain. How worried are they, you about that? I, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was in Brovary, where they attacked uh, just uh, food warehouses. That's also that's, that's, uh, these genocide tactics. But fortunately, Kiev is not in, under siege now. We are not in circle. Not yet. There are not yet, and I believe it will not be. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Thank sir. You. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Um, hope to see you uh, again later. So there you are, a scene of um, another scene in a capital city that has really come under attack this morning. Three just this morning, dozens and dozens and dozens of civilians terrorized, but still remarkably showing a great deal of resilience.